Good afternoon, human beings and animals possibly watching this. Welcome to the, uh, apparently this is a vlog series now, but I find this much easier to upload things. Just recording them and then editing them and then popping them online at the end of the day. So that's uh, what I'm probably going to do today. Um, yesterday, which was last night, we uh, attempted to use the oven to put that blade burrito in there and uh, failed miserably because by the time the oven was heated up, it was like 1030 and uh, I got to go to bed. You know what I mean? So always a good night's sleep. Um, so we're going to try again. So what I'm going to do is uh, let it go. And uh, in two hours, which is basically how long it takes to get to 2000 degrees. Um, yeah, that's how long it takes. Um, let's see what else. I need to, while we're doing that, I need to make another lock bar insert um, because the one for the other blade didn't work. And then while the machine's running the lock bar insert, I need to finish painting the back of the samurai. So yeah, as you can see, the I'd like to get it painted before um, the bed goes back on because otherwise it'll rust. And the first time I painted, when I enclosed the cab on the samurai, I never bothered to properly prime the cab, which is a huge mistake. So if you plan on painting something and it's bare metal, make sure you at least prime it. Um, yeah, that's uh, kind of the game plan. So let me uh, set some stuff up and then, well, oh, before we do that, I have this little ultrasonic cleaner that I bought off eBay, I think. And I see these in a bunch of different videos. It's just a cheap, like a Chinese manufacturer makes them and a bunch of people sell them under different names. But, uh, oh, oops. It works pretty good. I have Simple Green in here right now. And I uh, clean the, uh, I should probably do this with gloves, but I don't have any. Um, clean the blades yesterday. And it actually works like incredibly well. So I sanded the titanium by hand yesterday with, uh, oh, that's where there's a rust spot right there. <laughs> well, <laughs> I said it worked really good, but maybe, uh, maybe it worked. It works so good it caused titanium to rust, which is not really a thing. Huh, that's really weird. Um, but other than that very weird spot, it does a really good job of cleaning the, uh, dirt out from sanding, so... You can see how dirty the bottom of the tray is. So yeah, pretty good. Um, let's get a heater. I will say the heater sucks in this thing. I'm talking like you set this thing to 70 Celsius and it'll take over an hour to get there with the lid closed. So that's kind of, you kind of want to run it like, um, you know, you want to have it running a long time. Uh, and the, and the other annoying thing is like you set it and then like I'll hit okay, like I'll set it to go to 70 and you know, put the lid on, like to fully close it. So I'll set it to 70, let it go, hit 70, and when you turn it on and then the timer goes down from your 45 to 0, it'll actually turn the heater off. So what happens is if you walk away and you have the timer going, and it's zero, it'll actually shut the heater off, which is super annoying. It doesn't want to maintain the temp um, unless you have it set like this. So that's kind of, that's kind of a bummer. I think if I got a bigger one, um, it would probably heat faster, but that's kind of the, uh, the uh, nature of these things. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Hi boys. She's cooked. Go down to 1650. Is the uh, I looked up the you can pull the PDF up from Crucible that talks about the heat treating, and then it says you have to preheat at 1550 to 1600, which I totally forgot about. So we gotta go down to there, and then it says equalize. Then there's the A word, which I don't know how to pronounce, which is. Estinitinize. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, 1900 to 2000. Hold at temperature 15 to 30 minutes. So I think what that means is uh, we're going to put it in at uh, you know 1600. Then we're going to heat it up to 19 to between 19 and 2000. 
And when it hits 19 in 2000, we'll start the timer for 15, between 15 and 30 minutes. And then for quench, it actually says air or positive pressure quench, which I have no idea what that means, but two bar minimum. And then it says to below 125 degrees or salt or interrupted oil quench to about 1000 degrees. So obviously we're gonna air quench and I think doing this plate quench still counts as air quenching or does it? See, I don't really know because I don't know if it would specify plate quench or not, but it's fine. We'll do this plate quench thing. Then to temper it, which is how you get the actual hardness, it says double temper at 400, between 400 and 750 degrees, which is uh, 200 to 400 Celsius for you metric people. Hold for two hours minimum each time. So what that means is we got to hit between 400 and 750, and then we got to hold it at two hours and then you have to wait, um, oh, what does this say? Hold for two hours. Um, um, and then I'm pretty sure you have to, oh yeah, cool the hand warm before temper, between tempers. So <laughs> then what we have to do is we have to wait for the oven to cool down, down to hand temp, I think. I think you leave it in there. Um, and then you have to bring the oven back to the temper uh, temperature. Uh, and then the hardness you're supposed to achieve with this, if you do this correctly, which we are definitely going to completely mess this up, is 59 to 61 Rockwell Hardness C scale, or HRC. And the good news is I actually have one of those testers at work so we can actually test to make sure that we're hitting the hardness level anyways. But yeah, this is a little more involved than your typical heat to hold and then just dunk it in oil kind of thing. So yeah, this is a perfect setup for the home shop. Oh, that was loud. For the home shop. So yeah, we're at uh, 1950 right now, so I'm waiting for it to cool down to that uh, 1550-1600 and then we will go ahead and uh, toss our blade in. I went and got some uh, baby powder and a ton of distilled water. You should have seen the people at Walmart looking at me all funny. Like, that man's got a lot of distilled water. I th they must think I'm hoarding it, but it's distilled water, so shouldn't be drinking that. So, anyways, um... Let's add some water to our tank, the CNC tank, while this thing uh, cools down. Or I'm gonna do that. It's not exactly camera related material. Well, while that thing cools down, I got ourselves our piece of uh, stock for our lock bar insert. Now you're gonna tell me that I don't think the lock bar insert is that thick, and I would tell you that you, sir, 100% correct. Now, why would a man like myself, of my stature in society, be using such a thick, girthy piece of 17-4 pre-hard? Or does that mean post-hard? What does the pH mean? Anyways, it's because I have nothing else, so what can I say? Like I said, this is 17.4 pH, whatever that means. I just know it's quite hard. Probably good for a lock bar insert, I would say. Now, as far as Rockwell level goes, no clue. I could Google and tell you guys. Oh, great. We're not going to know because there's a certain um, condition of it. So we have no idea. But they are in Rockwell C. And the good news is that this is actually going to be less hard than our blade. And I'm pretty sure that's what we want. We want the lock bar insert to be just a little bit softer. That way, the blade wins all the time. You know what I mean? Um, okay, let's uh, go to the machine and we will cut our girthy piece of 17-4.
Okay, I want to change this from doing a facing up on the to deck it down to a uh, a facing up with an end mill as opposed to the big uh, face mill. I think that'll uh, leave a better surface finish, maybe. But yeah, let me uh, change it really quick. All right, before we uh, change that tool path, the furnace is up to temp, as you can tell. So we're gonna go ahead and start this process and uh, so this thing reads kind of weird but um, it says to heat to equalize so I'm guessing equalize what we'll do is we'll put it in there for 15 minutes and let it kind of heat the whole thing up to that temp and then what we'll do is we'll bring it to 1900 or between 19 and 2000 and then we'll do the 15 to 30 minutes when it gets there but only when it crosses the 19 minute mark i mean the 19,000 mark so let me get some uh, safety mix glasses and uh, some gloves mix safety over here and i think you actually want to set this up like standing but i don't have a jig in there to do that. <laughs> I don't think. The one that's in there is like not a it's like a block. Oh hello, it's warm in here. So I think what I can do is maybe oh that is very very warm. I'm just kinda kinda do one of these. Now I think we're gonna have to lay it down for this first one. Oh hello. <laughs> I forgot the tape. Alright we're just gonna let that burn off. <laughs> Shh, 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 don't worry about that. <laughs> just uh, excuse you. <laughs> oh, yep, just uh, venting out of the top a little bit. No big deal. <clears throat> okay, um, <laughs> it is smoking out the top. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, you can't see it. That's funny. Oh, I guess that's it. It was uh, some black smoke. I'll tell you what, one time I was using this thing, and I uh, put some, like, heavy tape in here. My god, the flame that shot out of this, and it was right under some sprinklers, that's some scary stuff. But luckily, I ain't got anything up here except really flammable uh, insulation bagging, so it's, it's fine. Okay, so I'm going to set the timer, because we're at 1550 to... Um, you know what? Actually, because it's already at 1550, I think it, it takes so long to get to 1900 that that should be enough time to count it. So I'm just going to actually crank the dial up to two grand and uh, let her eat. So uh, yeah, we'll see, uh, see how that goes. Okay, that is cooking away. And we are doing this again and I changed it to face with a half inch tool uh, immediately down to the correct depth with a 60,000 step over or was it 6,000? Well I'm curious if this thing is on size it does have ridges though unfortunately and this back part or knock the piece off, but it'd be good for another test. I'll be able to sand the ridges out anyways. So uh, let me get the micrometer. Okay, so it's supposed to be 125. So what is everybody's guess? I think 126 and 4 tenths. Can you guys see that? One eighteen. That's terrible. Well, it looks like that's a throwaway. I mean, that's a whole seventh hour away. And let's try again. Oh god, the timer's about to go off. Bad YouTubing right here. Where are my safety glasses? Alright boys, not sure if this is going to work. <clears throat> Expert level setup. Ooh, hello, that's 
very warm looking. Oh, yes. Definitely. Speed is my strong suit. That's warm. This is kind of... Oh, that's hot. Leave that open so it cools down. Ooh, I can't even touch the dial. Wow, that is hot. Man burns himself circa June 2020. Um, so, I mean, that's probably good, right? Right? I don't know. Like I said, I almost dropped it on the floor. What problem did we have that caused the insert to be cut, I mean the lock bore thing to be cut way, way, way low? So the uh, stainless that I'm using is actually precision ground, if you will. See, it's got the... Well, it's at least ground. I don't know if it's precision. It's precise to whatever number it measures to. So we will see what size that would be. And uh, it's probably not the same size as what's in the stock category on Fusion. So, right. Oh, man. Okay, so what we got here? Let's make sure these things are clean by putting our dirty fingers on them. And let's go to town. Oh, this is three quarters, it's not an inch. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty precise to me. 750 and uh, three tenths and five whatever you call those. Okay, not five whatever you call those, zeros. Three tenths, so let's see what we got in Fusion for our size. Should I screen record? Probably. Um, stock size, 75, yeah, see that ain't right? 74, 74. See, in the, right here, if you look, 75, and uh, no three tenths. I am gonna put that in there. But that's definitely not causing our seventh out off issue. And I think it has to do with our end mill. Um, hold on, I see these. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go back to using a face mill because that worked, worked actually way too well, even though I was made fun of for doing it. I will not be defeated. Um, let's try doing. I guess I have to make a new tool path. I mean, a uh, thing. I actually really like Fusion's new library. Most people hate it, but I come from the idea that it's nice to have the one tool library and you just. from it. You know what I mean? Okay, so where did our block go? Um what I ended up doing was we're gonna do obviously with the big face mill and uh even step downs no not even uh chip thinning and um one thou depth or one hundred thou depth of cuts, a point one, and then a finishing pass of six inches of 
per minute at 20 thousandths depth of cut. And I've left it 20, stock to leave is 20 thou from the top. And we'll be able to check um, that, uh, see if there's 20 thou on the final finishing pass. We'll be able to measure the machine. And if there is, we can take that final cut. And if there isn't, we know something is horribly wrong. But yeah. Here's where we're at. Look what I'm holding in my hand. Oh, and I cut my thumb. some needy pieces. Okay, so over L yonder, we're very close to 600 degrees, so I'm going to turn this thing on and when it hits 600, I'll toss it back in for two hours. Alright, let's see what we got. I left 20 fell, like I said. So it should be um, 125 plus 20, which is 145 something. Math is hard. So, 140. That means something is incorrect. So, why don't we remeasure the face wall height? So, I mean, it wasn't close, but it's not like that far away. We got 4, 3, 2, 4, 9, and we had 3, I mean, 4, 3, 2. Five, seven. So you're looking at a difference of um, um, eight tenths. So basically a foul. I mean, that's really not that great, honestly. But it shouldn't be that much of a difference. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take our stock and I'm going to flip it over. That way we know that um, we're sitting on a nice flat surface. Because there's a chance that the uh, stock is kind of wonky. And uh, that's about what I think I'm going to do right now, and go. Alright, let's see what I got. I made sure to leave 5,000 this time when we did that flip over. Better, but we're 3,000 off, which is kind of not great for the face mill to take a 3,000 cut. So... But we're just going to kind of have to uh, live with it for now. Alright, so I got the fixture set up. So we're going to take our piece and we're going to bolt it to its spot and then we'll rough it out. Okay, we got our block in and then G55 set to the corner. We're using a handle fixture for this. So that's just a little side project on the handle fixture. And uh, we're going to rough it out, contour, leave some tabs, and then uh, we got a little baby clamp that we use to hold it down, and then we'll cut the tabs off. There's the baby clamp. Cool. So, clearancing. <laughs> Good old voltage issues. It is still spinning right above the part. 2500 RPM, boys. Not dangerous at all. Okay, minus the interruption. There's what we got. Time for the clamp. Uh, time. In. Yeah. So now we're going to come in with our uh, 60 thou end mill and we're going to knock these tabs off and we'll do a nice little chamfer and she'll be good. Oh, okay, so on this front face, what I didn't do last time was leave enough stock 
to actually be able to polish to fit the knife. But this time we're going to leave 20 thou, and I'm hoping that's enough uh, material to be able to like, um, oh, what's the word, adjust the lock pressure. So uh, yeah, let's get ready to break things. Also helps to have good power in your place of business. Did I say business? To be a business, you have to make money. And I haven't done any of that. And we're back. Now you guys can see what I deal with on a daily basis. This is one part of this thing I shut off, what, three times? Okay, well that turned out okay, but I just realized that if we leave 20 thou on that outside thing, it's not going to want to fit in this negative shape, so we'll probably have to cut this outside piece a little bit. Alright, so let's see, Visifying. Here is the insert, here is the pocket, um, right, upside down. So that goes in there like that. I cut the pocket out a little bit more on that side. So good. And it's not sitting flat, so I'm just going to go ahead and polish the front of it on the polisher just to get the burrs off. I don't know if you can see them. But uh, yeah, it looks like uh, this might work pretty good. There it is, D bird. Didn't want to go too crazy with the deburring, otherwise it won't be accurate, you know. So uh, let's pop that guy in there and oops, and uh, machine it. Just a uh, simple bore is what's going on. Well, boys, it almost went well. Here's the handle. And uh, as you can see, there's a screw, or part of a screw, stuck in our hole. <sighs> so now I gotta remake the handle. Alright boys, I'm gonna call it for tonight. Um, I'm making a new handle because of our fantastic issue that I said. So titanium likes to kind of squeeze um, itself for some reason. It kind of like shrinks in a way, or grows. I don't know, that's what I've heard. So I just backed off like stock to leave on the threading operation when it does its thread mill and that should fix our problem. I think. So yeah, making a new handle. But uh, I will work on uploading this and uh, yeah, I'm waiting for the... So the first temper is good on the uh, blade but I'm waiting for it to cool down so I can start doing the second temper and this stuff takes a really long time. So yeah, if we, uh, if this turns out successful as far as like a uh, hard million and everything, then what I'll do in the future is I'll make like five of them and throw them all together because uh, that's what smart people do. All right, uh, if you like this sub and uh, catch on the next one.